Hello, welcome to the second part of the discussion on model Q question that I have shared a couple of days back. Before I get into the discussion on part B questions, just wanted to clarify one thing which I missed out in part A. Let me show you the program. Here, what I have shown you in red is a correction that I have made from the question that I have shared with you. If you recall, I told that all this instruction that we have, which op accepts two operands and then one going to the destination, one of them needs to be the same, right? All three cannot be different. So that one thing which you should remember while writing the code also that all the three registers that we mentioned in these programs or in these instructions cannot be different. They need one of them need to be the same. So the earlier I have written R1 here, which is not correct, and I have made that change now to just highlight this point that we have to be careful about this particular thing. Now, this I already asked, you no, know, discussed about the answer. There is no change in that. The B option is the correct one because when a value of 1 0 0 0 is moved here we are LSR we are doing moved by 1 bit it will become 4 8 is 8 will become 4 so that is the correct answer only thing is the registers should not have been 3 different registers ok. Now apart from that there are other discussions that we had on part A stand to be accurate and you can go ahead and try solving similar problems or write such program on a real hardware and run it on the hardware and try to see whether it works fine or not. Now let us get into the discussion on part B now. This is the question which says that you have to write an assembly program to implement this particular instruction which is high level instruction in C. We are not assigning anything, we are just saying that implement this. Assuming that you are getting this S int which is a signed integer in R0. So you are writing an assembly program assuming that R0 is already pushed into or already R0 is having the value which has been passed by a C function. Since I have not given you a particular value for R0, I can't tell you what is be the output of this function. But I want you to just write the function implementing this particular instruction which is in C. Now let us see how to do this. I am sure you might have tried it out when I have given you the model question. This is question 11. S int has to be right shifted by 4. Now what is S int? S int is a signed int. I have already mentioned it to you in the question. Now there are two shift registers right. LSR is there which is logical shift right and then ASR is there. Always wherever, whenever you see a right shift, think about which instruction I would use for a particular purpose. Now since I said that S int is being passed, which is a signed integer is being passed, we need to use arithmetic shift right because we need to bring in the sign bit value of this integer while shifting the values into to the right. So let us write the function now. The function may be with something colon starting and we are assuming that R0 is having the value which is passed into the function. So we can very conveniently assume R0 is there which is having the value of S int. Now we need to move it by 4 bit. So that 4 can be given as an immediate constant also but I am assuming that since we have all the registers in our hand we could write move R2 4 and then since it is an S integer which is signed integer I have to use ASR only not the LSR. So next instruction will be ASR I am writing everything in capital here it does not matter you can write it in small and capital or mix of that both are allowed. Now only thing is we need to make sure that we write this registers which are not different. So I am writing the answer into R0 the destination is R0. R0 is 
already having the value which is moved by 4 bit which is given in R2. So I have shifted it by 4. Now I need to ampersand and it with 0xAA which I can also do it using some other register. I can reuse R2 but since I have R3 available to me I am writing it here 0xAA is also allowed in assembly. Okay. Now remember this value whatever we are moving can be only a byte wide. Okay. It can be a byte wide. So I always I make sure that I give you a constants which are only byte so that you can do it. Now I have moved that value. Now I have to do a AND operation. Now AND I need to do it with what R0. Result is written into R0 and R0 R3. So here also I have to make sure that one of the registers is reused here. So R0 is having the value which is right shifted by 4 and then I am adding it with 0xAA which is available in R3 and writing it the result in R0. Now I can do BXLR. So this result has to be passed back to the following function. Right in assembly function, I am implementing the below operation. Okay. And though this question does not say that you need to pass back this value, but which is implicit. But even if you do not take care of it, we will, if the question does not mention it, then it will be considered as a right correct answer. So this is the program we need to write. Now what I have done is to just verify, I will be sharing this code also with you. This question, this, this is what I have written. Okay, let me compare it with what I have written here. There may be some changes. Here I am saying that R2 I have moved, here R1 I have used. So you are free to use any register. Okay, there is uh, R0 to R3 is free for you to use. So we will not be expecting you to write the same code, which is not warranted. Okay. So R1 is 4 and then ASR R0, R0, R1. I have used R1 here whereas in this place R2 I have used. It's intentional. Okay, You will know that both works. Move R2, here R3 I have used, 0xAA, then and R0, R0, R3. And then BXLR because R0 is, I am assuming that the final result is in R0 which is going back to the calling function. So when I did that, I got a value. Okay, based on the input, okay, we have to pass some value and then check the output. So, I am not asking you to do that. So, it's okay as long as you write this function. So, let me summarize what is expected of you in this question. I am asking you to write an assembly program, program which implements this and assuming that SNT is available in R0. So, you have R1, R2, R3 which is free and it is not receiving any parameters. So, you are free to use them. Now, I am using these constants which are 4 and 0xAA by moving into those registers and writing an instruction. Now only thing we need to be careful about is right shifting is uh, signed integer is being right shifted so ASR instruction to be used and also remember that the register that you use two of them are same okay and then R0 this is what I have done ASR then I moved the AA value which is given here. And, and then I have done an AND operation which is expected of this. But I can also have an OR operation or left shift or I can pass unsigned integer. This constant may be different. So I, or I can add one more thing also to it. Then you can keep writing this assembly code which, which is a direct translation of what is given one by one. So always remember that you need to compute the value which is within the parenthesis and then perform this other operation. That's all you need to be careful about. As long as you know this instruction and the rules of that I need to use to register the same and preferably you uh, you can have a convention that I use these two registers same and things will be become will become easier. Okay. I hope this question 11 is clear to you. Now let us go to next one. This is a standard ARM architecture process, parameter processing convention which is already uh, slide is given to you on particular section we discussed about it so i am not going into the details of explaining that maybe you can read through that but what is expected of this question maybe i will write it you know i am giving it to here aapcs describes a contract between a calling routine and a called routine okay this is what you are supposed to make sure you mention this it is a contract between a calling routine and a called routine and what are the obligations obligations are on the caller 
who is calling this function to create a program state in which the called routine may start to execute. So, what we need to do is the called routine should be able to execute in the context. That means what the obligation on the caller is R0 to R3, the caller has to make sure that they are free. You cannot depend on those values when you when the function returns. Okay, the caller cannot assume that R0 to R3 are not disturbed because the contract says that R0 to R3 can be used by the caller. Then the uh, called routine, sorry. So called routine will be able to use them. So caller cannot assume that what I had before calling the function will be there available when I get a control after the function returns. So the caller has to take care of that. Obligation of the call routine is to preserve the program state of the caller across the call. That means when the function calls goes across a function to function, also from one C function to another assembly function or another C function, it has to make sure that if it is disturbing anything other than R0 to R3 register, it should push it into the stack and then pop it out before returning back. So that is an obligation on the called routine side. The rights of the called routine to alter the program state of its caller. Now, you should know what are the things you have the rights. Now, I can also return a, or my results into R0 or R1 based on whether I am returning a 32 bit or 64 bit. So, I have discussed at length about this standard and we have also written a lot many programs by passing parameters and returning results from there. So, I need you to understand it very clearly and make few statements like this which is enough for you to explain to a no, through the answer that you understood what is the obligation between the caller and the call routine. Fine, that's what is expected. Now, this is the program. When the following instructions are executed, what will be returned by this function? So, what you need to do, go through this in, in order. Now, does it depend on any parameter being passed? That you can verify it. Okay, if, Then you can always say that, no, I cannot predict it unless you tell me what is being passed to the function. Right. So now, let us see here. Now, what is bearing? Question 13. Now, R1 is moved. R1 is uh, getting a value 1. R2 is getting a value 2. Now, what is this hash 1 and hash 2? It's a decimal number. Please remember, they are a decimal number and uh, our registers are 32 bit wide. You have to remember that all zeros are there in the top b31 okay and b0 is 1 the rest of it is all zeros that is the r1 value this is r1 value so let me remove the 0x here and i am showing the bit pattern here and then r2 is 2 that means all zeros except this last bit one zero or last but one okay now compare now we are comparing with r1 and r2 now are they same they are different numbers then branch equal to so it says if it is equal that means r1 and r2 are equal then the subtract of this value when it subtracts it it will result in a zero so zero flag will be set to one so beq will jump to leave one if these values were equal whereas here we have already loaded this value with one and two which are different so it will not be going to the leave one it will be following through so that you should remember that it comes through down to the next instruction which is returning a value of 0 into R0 and then BXLR though. So, this function is actually control is coming here and it does not come to the leave one. That is what you are supposed to understand by going through the code. So, I will be giving you some piece of code and then asking you to find out what is being returned or what will be the content of some particular register. This could be a possible question that you can expect. And in this case, what you need to understand is the flow of this program and then say R0 is getting a zero value. So what is being returned by this function is zero. It is returning a zero value. Okay, that's the answer. Now, a similar question and I made a change here also compared to what the question I shared with you. It was earlier R1 and R1, which is not a valid instruction as far as the cortex and zero plus go is concerned. Otherwise, there are other um, uh, processes allow that instruction, but here because we are talking about RP2040 and Cortex M0, this is the one. Now, the same kind of question here and similar kind of question will come in the exam also. 
So you have to just follow these instructions and understand them. Now what will be the return back function? You know, when the following instruction is executed, what will be returned by this function to the calling routine? So here also, I am not expecting any parameter being passed. In case if I am expecting some parameter to be passed, I would say that R0 uh, first parameter passed is so and so to this function. In that case, you will know that it is available in R0. Here I am blindly loading this R0 to 3. R0 is loaded with 3. Okay. And then R1, R2 is loaded with 2. Then we are doing ORR. Now ORR means what? It's an R operation. So since we are doing this, you just write it like this. Okay. That is very, very important that you always follow this. 3 is 1, 1. So B0 is 1. B1 is 1. And then what is in R2? We are all zeros followed by one zero okay now when you do a r operation of this what will happen all the zeros will be zeros here is one and this one zero r will be one so this will result in three being written into r zero and bxlr is done that means the value which is going back to the called link routine is three so that's the answer okay i hope this is clear to you now let us actually you can also write a function and then actually I have written the code. I will uh, I have written the code the same thing. Okay, question 13 and question 14 I have written it and then I have seen the output also. This code also I will share it with you so that you can try it out different combinations and then run it and understand it. Okay, that's the best thing. Even if you have any doubts, please run this code. You can try out different combinations and then practice yourself. Okay. Now, 15. Explain the functionality of the assembly instruction LDRSB if a byte value 0xA is loaded by it from the memory into a register R0. So, what I mean by that, LDRSB is executed, it means it's a byte value which is being loaded but signed byte. And what is getting loaded? It is loading a value, a byte value which is 0xAA. Now, immediate thing what you should do is write down the binary pattern of this. Now this A which is a byte okay A A MSB of this byte is 1 that means the sign bit here is 1 and then it says that it is a sign bit byte which is getting loaded that means it is a signed integer or uh, uh, it is not signed integer signed byte okay signed byte it's signed byte means a byte value which is signed that means the MSB of a byte is but B7 is if it is 1, it is negative number. So, since we are doing a S byte, when it is going into a register, all the higher values B31 to B8 will all be 1. Now, when I write it in hexadecimal form, I group them into 4. So, F, 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 right? This is one byte, this is another byte, and then I also have third byte here, the last byte is what is here, A, okay. This is the value which will be in R0, okay. What will be in R0 after this instruction loads this value AX. You have to write it as 0x, remember how many Fs you put it, okay. In, uh, in a 32 bit value, 8 Fs will be there, whereas here you have the last byte which is, this is the LS byte which is AA. The rest of it will be this is one byte, this is one byte, and this is one byte, and this is another byte. Okay. So the answer for this question 15 is you have to write this. Okay. This is the answer for it. Okay. If you don't understand any of this explanation, I want you to ask in the class. Okay. Or send me a message on WhatsApp so that you I know that you have a problem, but I don't want you to do that just one day before the exam because I will not have opportunity to explain it in the class. So I suggest that you do it before. I hope you will be watching this video much before the exam starts, but I doubt I, that will happen. Okay, now what will be stored by the below STR instruction? Now STR means what is a storing in store instruction and STR itself means that it is a four byte value which is being stored from the memory. Now if R1 has an address which is 2000 X, so assume that R1 is a base register which is having a value 2000 means we are accessing the memory which is starting from 2000 address 
four bytes we have to read okay and r0 is having a value and r0 we are actually if it r1 has an address this and r0 is having a value of this now what are we trying to do we are trying to load store the value which is in r0 into the memory pointed to by 2000 so r0 is having uh, if you are a vegetarian you may not like this but this is actually a hexadecimal number okay don't try to read this word as a dead beef but it's a hexadecimal number and i am sure you will be able to represent it in binary form i still see that there are many who have some difficulty in converting between binary and decimal or in hexadecimal you need to become conversant and comfortable and if you do not follow please bring it up in the class now how many bytes are loaded into the memory starting from this address 2000 that's the first question and from this instruction you know that it is four bytes right and then what is stored in the address now byte this is a byte byte suppose if i say 2000 x then 2001 to 3 four bytes are stored, loaded from r0 now where what is in there in r0 dead beef is there that means it is a little endian. I am saying that assume the processor follows little endian. That means it will store the ASB uh, no, lower byte value into the lower address. So AF, BE, AD and DE. Okay. So this is how it will be loaded into the memory. This is what I want you to draw a picture and show this in the answer. That's all. This you need to know what is little endian and it starts from 2000 and starts with the lower byte when it is little endian and you should also know that str does a 4 byte value of store or load okay it could be anything so i hope this is clear to you now let us look into question 17 what will be read by the below ldrh okay now ldrh is load instruction and it is h means half word so half word is 16 bit okay 16 bits or two bytes now where is it reading from it is reading from an address 2000 it doesn't matter r1 is pointing at 2000 and four byte value stored in the memory starting from that address yes now assume that i am giving you what is there in the memory four byte values what are those values it's in little indian mode so assume that the processor follows little indian mode so bb is here and aa would have been here 0x2000 address and ff is here and another ff is here okay four values are there now what we are doing is ldrh that means starting from this address i am doing a load of only two bytes that means bb and aa would be moved into the r0 value so r0 is going to get the lsb will be here aa will be here and then what will be here will it be zeros or one if it has LDR SH, it would have extended by FF, but this is all zeros. So this will be either you can write it answer as 0x AA BB is enough. Okay. If you write this as 0x AA BB, which is the right answer. Okay. Now, now let me see the question 17. Okay. bba00 okay so it is not sign extended here because it is ldrh okay so that is very important this is the answer you don't need to write the leading zeros you can write 0x aa bb also is fine but only thing is you should know that it will come because bb is stored at the first address and aa is stored as a little indian mode so the same thing will come here only thing you should remember that the lower values come into the lower values of the r0 and the upper portion will be 0 because it is not ldr sh In, whereas if i had given ldr sh because msb is 1 here it would have been fff here 4 f should have been there if it was an ldr h that is what i want you to have a clarity on okay so this is about question 17 now let us look into 18 and 19 which is a very simple thing i want you to explain so is a 
load multiple LDM is load multiple. Now what is in R0? That's a base address it has and then R1, R2, R3. Now what you need to remember is it is loading from some address pointed to by R0. So R0 is having an address which is pointed to by this. Now whenever I use LDM, I say 4 bytes wide data I will consider. Now all the addresses are 4 byte aligned and these registers are all even though if it is given in a random order, you have to order them in the increasing number. Okay. Uh, even if I given you R3, comma R1, comma R2, first order them into increasing number R2, R3 and then loading the value from the memory is from the lower address to higher address. Now, if this is 2000, suppose what or whatever may be the address, the lower address is here and higher address is here. So, R1 will be loaded from this value, whatever is here will be loaded into R1, the lower byte address or uh, here in the word address, the lower address is loaded into lower number register and then the next value will be loaded into R2, the next value will be loaded into R3. So, it keeps increasing the address and then loads the values into those registers. So, LDM is a load multiple, it is loading from the memory to the registers. So, same thing is a similar thing happens here in where it is a store. That means it is storing value from registers. Now, I am giving you in this order. Now, you need to remember that it is not going to store in this order R4, R6, R5, it is not going to store because this is the starting address, lower address, and then increasing number of addresses with 4 byte uh, addresses. This is 4 byte wide it is going to store it in this order R5, R6. So, R4 will go into this memory R5 will uh, R4, R5, R6. So, that is what you have to explain maybe a small picture and then show this and explain it that is what I expect you to do and you can refer the um, slides that I have given you. Then final question is what are the three special registers? I think this is very obvious you know that higher registers R13, R14 and R15 are the special registers R13 happens to be the stack pointer you should write this is a link register and this is a program counter and what is the functionality of this is looks it is always pointing at stack pointer and then push and pop instructions use this to while these instructions are executed the SP is manipulated and what is LR? LR is a link register which is used for holding the return address when the function executes BXLR that means it helps the function to come back to the calling routine the next instruction after the calling routine um, because it stores the address in the link register. Now what is R15? R15 is also a program counter which points always at the code area and processor picks up the instruction pointed to by the PC and executes that instruction. So this is a simple uh, explanation that you need to give and I can tell you that this question is going to be there. And please understand this, explain this to get full marks. Okay. So that's all. I think this has uh, helped you in ramping up for the exam. And whatever I have explained in this lecture, both uh, while discussing part A and part B, will be very useful for the upcoming midterm exam. And I want you to take it uh, with interest, learn, and then come prepared. And sure, you will be able to get much better score than what you have done in your internal assessment exam that happened two weeks back. Bye-bye. Thank you.